For centuries, Poland has been at the center of geopolitical struggles, with its powerful neighbors vying for control over its strategic location and resources. At the heart of these struggles is Poland's complex, distrusting, and often antagonistic relationship with Russia. From the partitions of Poland to the Soviet occupation after World War II, Russia has played a pivotal role in shaping Poland's destiny. And as the Russian bear once again flexes its muscles on Poland's borders, the Poles are keenly aware of what this could mean. Join us as we uncover how Poland's history is influencing its current actions and rapid militarization, as well as what implications this could have for the future of Europe. Let us begin at the end of the 18th century, when the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was a vast and diverse state, encompassing territories that are now part of Poland, Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine and Russia. Despite its size, the Commonwealth was weakened by internal divisions, political instability and economic decline. Poland's military, once a formidable force, had been severely depleted by a series of conflicts as the nation's strength declined. These conflicts included the War of the Polish Succession, which occurred between 1733 and 1738, and the Bar Confederation, a civil war that took place between 1768 and 1772. The Commonwealth's system of consensus-based decision-making made it difficult to respond effectively, leaving the country vulnerable. The first partition in 1772 was just the beginning of a land grab by Russia, Prussia and Austria, who sought to expand their own territories and reduce Poland's influence. With each subsequent partition, in 1793 and 1795, the Commonwealth's power and territory were further eroded until it was no more. The powerless King of Poland, Stanislaw August Poniatowski, stood by as his country was annexed piece by piece. During the partitions of Poland, Russia gained significant territorial and strategic advantages that still burn in the memory of Poles today. In the first partition, which took place in 1772, Russia acquired the territories of Livonia and Belarus, which gave it access to the Baltic Sea and strengthened its western borders. The acquisition of Belarus was especially significant because it allowed Russia to secure its hold on Ukraine, which was a critical breadbasket for the Russian Empire. In the second partition, which took place in 1793, Russia gained control of large parts of western and central Poland, including the cities of Warsaw and Lublin. This territory provided Russia with a strategic buffer zone against its western neighbors and allowed it to consolidate its hold on the Commonwealth. In the third partition, which took place in 1795, Russia required the remainder of Polish territory that had not already been annexed by Prussia and Austria. This included the cities of Krakow and Vilnius, which were important cultural and economic centers. The partitions of Poland marked a turning point in European history, as they enabled Russia to expand its territory and consolidate its power in the region. However, the partitions also had dire consequences for Poland, which lost its independence and suffered a significant decline in influence. As Russia employed force to achieve its goals, the partitions served as a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked aggression, leaving a lasting legacy of mistrust and fear that continues to shape Poland's relationships with its neighbors today. Despite Poland's inability to resist the partitions, some fought back. In 1794, a national uprising led by Tadeusz Kościuszko briefly managed to retake parts of the country. But the uprising was eventually crushed by Russian and Prussian forces. For over a century, Poland was erased from the map of Europe, and Poles were subject to the policies and rule of Russia. Throughout the 19th century, Polish nationalism remained a potent force as Poles held fast to their history, culture and language. Despite being occupied by Russia, the Poles refused to give up their fight for independence and launched several uprisings, including the November Uprisings of 1830 to 1831 and the January Uprising of 1863 to 1864. The November Uprising, ignited by a surge of nationalistic fervor, was led by General Józef Kloplitski, who sought to restore the 1815 Constitution of the Congress Kingdom of Poland. The rebellion posed a significant threat to Russian control of Poland and Lithuania, with an estimated 10,000 to 15,000 insurgents taking up arms and tens of thousands more offering their support in other ways. 
The Russian response to the November uprising was brutal, with a scorched earth policy that burned villages and crops, leaving civilians to suffer. Mass executions and deportations to Siberia were also employed. The final death toll was staggering, with 25,000 to 30,000 Poles killed and 70,000 imprisoned or exiled to Siberia. The Russian army destroyed numerous cities and towns, including the capital city of Warsaw. The city had been a center of Polish culture and intellectual life for centuries, and its near-complete destruction was a devastating blow to Polish national identity. The Russians also targeted Polish institutions, including universities, libraries, and museums, in an effort to erase Polish culture and history. In 1863, the January uprising erupted, with around 30,000 insurgents taking up arms against Russian rule. However, the Russian Empire responded with brutal force, implementing a policy of repression and pacification to quell the rebellion. This included mass executions, deportations, and the confiscation of property. The Russian army also deployed more troops to the region, and Russian officials were given more authority to suppress the rebellion. The cost of the uprising was high, with around 21,000 Poles executed, exiled, or imprisoned, and over 10,000 Russian soldiers killed or wounded. These uprisings were a turning point in the relationship between the Polish people and Russia, and played a significant role in shaping Polish national identity. They also cemented a deep sense of mistrust and animosity that persists to this day. Following this period, Russia also implemented a policy of Russification in Poland, which sought to suppress Polish culture and language and force Russian culture on the population. This policy further fueled Polish resentment towards Russian rule. Poland was unable to regain its independence until the end of World War I and the signing of the Treaty of Versailles in 1918. After 123 years of occupation, the rebirth of Poland was a momentous occasion and a testament to the resilience and determination of the Polish people. However, Poland's newly acquired independence after the Treaty of Versailles would not go unchallenged for long, as the Soviet Union launched the Soviet-Polish War shortly thereafter. The Polish-Soviet War of 1920-1921 was a conflict between the newly established Second Polish Republic and the Soviet Union. In April 1920, the Red Army invaded Poland in an attempt to spread communism westward, leading to a brutal war that saw both sides fielding large armies of tens of thousands of soldiers. Marshal Joseph Pilsudski led the Polish army, while the Soviet army was led by several commanders, including Mikhail Tukhachevsky and Semyon Budyonny. The conflict was fought primarily in the territories of modern-day Poland, Ukraine, Belarus and Lithuania. The war saw several key battles, including the Battle of Warsaw in August 1920, which is considered one of the most decisive battles in European military history. The Polish army, heavily outnumbered and outgunned, managed to repel the Soviet advance and push the Red Army back eastward. The war resulted in an estimated 70,000 to 80,000 casualties on the Polish side and 120,000 to 160,000 casualties on the Soviet side, including both military and civilian deaths. The conflict officially ended on March 18, 1921, with the signing of the Treaty of Riga. Despite being the underdog, the Polish army's victory in the war was a significant turning point in European history. It was the first time a European army had successfully defeated a Soviet invasion, and it helped to stem the tide of Soviet expansionism. The victory also reinforced the notion that Poland was a key player in Europe and could stand up to larger powers. The precarious position in which Poland found itself after the Polish-Soviet War of 1920 to 1921 would prove to be a foreshadowing of the country's fate during World War II. As tensions rose in Europe in the 1930s, Poland found itself in a precarious position. The country was sandwiched between Nazi Germany to the west and the Soviet Union to the east. Poland signed a mutual assistance pact with the United Kingdom and France in 1939, but the country was ill-prepared for war. On September 1, 1939, Nazi Germany launched a massive invasion of Poland, using its superior military technology and tactics to quickly overrun the country. 
The Soviet Union, having secretly agreed to divide Poland with Nazi Germany, invaded from the east on September 17, 1939. Poland had initially counted on support from its allies, primarily Great Britain and France, to resist German aggression. However, Poland's allies were slow to act, and the country was left to fight Germany largely on its own. Poland's government in exile in London tried to persuade its allies to provide more substantial support, but this effort was largely unsuccessful. While Britain and France did declare war on Germany in response to its invasion of Poland, they did not provide much material assistance to the Polish military. Poland's military was overwhelmed by the German and Soviet offensive, and the country was quickly partitioned between its two invaders. While Polish soldiers and civilians continued to fight against the Germans and the Soviets throughout the war, there was little hope of a successful outcome without significant outside help. The horrors of Poland during World War II are difficult to overstate. The country was invaded and occupied by both Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia, resulting in enormous suffering and loss of life. It is estimated that around 6 million Poles, including 3 million Jews, were killed during the war, which amounted to around 20% of the country's population. In addition to the atrocities committed by the Nazis, including the establishment of ghettos and concentration camps, the Soviets also committed numerous atrocities against the Polish people. In 1940, the Soviet secret police executed around 22,000 Polish officers and other intelligentsia in the Katyn massacre. The Soviets also deported around 1.5 million Poles to Siberia and other parts of the Soviet Union, where many perished due to harsh conditions. Poland's bitter experience after World War II has left an indelible mark on its people. Despite earlier promises, Poland's allies failed to protect its sovereignty, instead using it as a bargaining chip to appease the Soviet Union. This betrayal left the Poles feeling abandoned and mistrustful of their former allies. Poland was yet again plunged into Russian control as a satellite state, with communism imposed and dissent crushed by the iron hand of the Soviet Union. The Poles endured a brutal regime of oppression, censorship, and flagrant human rights abuses. The communist government was deeply reviled, and the Poles chafed under the yoke of Soviet dominion. In the 1980s, the Solidarity Movement emerged in Poland, led by Lech Wałęsa. Solidarity was a social movement that sought to end communist rule by bringing democracy to Poland. The movement was initially suppressed by the government, but it gained momentum and eventually forced the government to negotiate. In 1989, free elections were finally held in Poland, and the Solidarity Movement won a landslide victory. This marked the end of communist rule in Poland and the beginning of a new era of democracy and freedom. The bitter memories of Russian dominion lingered long in the minds of Poles, who were keenly aware of the historical injustices inflicted upon them. Decades of oppressive Soviet rule had instilled a deep-seated sense of mistrust and resentment toward Russia and its political system. Poland has made significant efforts to strengthen its ties with the West and distance itself from Russia since the fall of the Soviet Union and its transition to democracy. In 1999, the country joined NATO, in part to protect itself from a potential Russian threat, and has fostered a close relationship with the United States. With Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Poland has emerged as the most crucial European ally of the US. It has been a vocal advocate for Europe to arm Ukraine, while also facilitating foreign aid through its airfields and transport networks. Given Poland's history and strategic position in Europe, it is no surprise that the nation is deeply invested in the outcome of the war in Ukraine. The Polish people fear that if Russia were to succeed in Ukraine, it would only be a matter of time before Poland is targeted next, as it has been in the past. This time, though, with the acquisition of advanced weapons systems and the establishment of a powerful military presence, Poland is not only sending a message to its potential adversaries, but it is also asserting itself as a major player in the region.